Hallelujah. He deserves the glory. Can we just clap it for Jesus today? Can we clap it? Does he deserve the glory in our lives this morning? I mean, we shout at basketball games. We shout at football games. We shout when we go to concerts. But can we give God a praise this morning? Can we give him a shout on Resurrection Sunday? I mean, this is what it's about. He came, he died, he lived for us. Amen. Hallelujah. He is worthy of the praise. Can somebody say that this morning? He is worthy. He is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. God is good. Amen. Amen. Listen, we are so excited to be able to have all of you here. It is a packed house, and we believe for more people coming in. And we are looking forward to just being able to worship God this Resurrection Sunday morning. We are so excited and thankful that you are here. For those of you who have tuned in to come and worship with us online, we just want to say thank you, and we pray that God blesses you in that room, wherever it is that you are tuning in and watching. We just pray that the presence of God fill that space. You know why? Because he's alive. That's it. You can look in the tomb, but he's not there. He is risen. Look to your neighbor and let him know the good news. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Amen. Amen. This morning, I'd like to take an opportunity to um, uh, read a scripture passage for you. And it's in Philippians. And just for the respect of the word of God, I'm going to ask you stand with me just for a little while longer. It's Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. And this is what it reads. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father forever. Amen. Amen. Isn't that such good news, church? I'm going to encourage you just for a moment just to take a seat. As we think about and reflect that verse and what that means, that the God of the universe literally came down, emptied himself into the flesh of a man, that man's name was Jesus. And there is a passage in the Bible in Matthew chapter uh, 20, verse 28, and this is what it says. It's a beautiful passage. It says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life, watch this word, as ransom for many, as ransom. His life paid for our being able to be here. His life paid for us to be able to gather and to worship and to praise and to exalt his name. If you weren't here um, Friday night, you missed out on a powerful word where God has literally saved us from the power of of sin, the bondage that it has us in. And for those of us here this morning, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to let you know, we're not doing an altar call right now, but I want you to know before we move any further in this service, there is someone who paid ransom for your life. If you are thinking you are little to nothing, that you've never been encouraged, you've never been loved on, you've never been cared about, I'm telling you, there was a man, his name was Jesus, and he came to pay the ransom for you and for me. And so this morning, as we worship this man, this God, I encourage you to do so with the full knowledge and understanding that he did not just come to die, but he rose again, and he did that for you and for me. The worship team is going to lead us into our next set, and I just pray that as we all here and we're worshiping and praising together, that we invite the Holy Spirit to come, to move, and to have his way. Amen? There never was another like Jesus. He caused all creation to be. 
and ransacked in pursuit of words appropriate to convey to human hearts and minds of his glorious preeminence. There never was another who was human child and also was the divine son, who was wounded by Satan and who at the same time crushed Satan, who was appointed the savior of men yet was crucified by men, who was the judge of men yet was led as a felon to a tribunal for one another. One who saved others could not save himself. He who had no sin became sin for us. Who was this king of glory yet wore no crown but a crown of thorns? Who in the glory he had with God before the world was, had angelic hails of heaven and yet on earth gave himself literally to the murder of his body with the nails in his hands and nails in his feet. There never was another who was a victim of a Roman cross and victor at a Jewish grave. There never was another who poured all seas, all lakes, all rivers out of the crystal chalices of eternity. Yet on the cross, said with a mouth hot like a parched desert and cried, I thirst. All of this was written to describe the Lord Jesus Christ. And our scripture that Jethro read tells us that God has given him a name that is above every other name. He is, say he is, is. our righteous, righteous. our risen, risen. our our reigning Christ. Jesus is alive. Somebody shout to God and give a shout of victory. He is, today we proclaim it here. He is our King of kings and our Lord of lords. Are we ready for praise and worship or what this morning? We're going to be a little rowdy today. I hope everyone's ready for that. Because we have a very faithful Savior who's never lost. He is my faithful Father calling me out of the dark. Night cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He is my firm foundation, my anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with his word. So wind, listen to to the sound of power on my lips. Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost a battle. No, he never will. He never will. No, he never will. He never will. Hey! 
debts he publicly humiliated the enemy and he stripped them of power so that we can walk out the fullness of what he's always intended us to today you are a living trophy of miracles and victory today because the mighty one of heaven came down and said enough is enough well you better celebrate today because you have breath and life 
in your bones, in your cells, in the very fibers of your being. Because he said you'd be here today because of one moment of obedience. Hallelujah. This is our firm foundation that we stand on this day. And Jesus, we thank you for it. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand when everything around me shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. It's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad than I put my faith in Jesus. He's never led me down. today. One more time, Ray. 
everlasting love. He is a faithful God to each and every one. I really sense in my spirit and in my heart some of you have believed a lie from the devil that you're a second class or a stepchild to God's kingdom. I'm here to tell you there is no stepchildren in God's family. And I rebuke and I bind that lie of deceitfulness that you have bought. I'm here to tell you today God is a faithful God, his mercies are new every morning. His grace is whatever you needed in the time of need, and it is there for you. Today, just reach out and receive his grace. Receive his love. You are a treasure in God's eyes. He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you more than you can think or imagine. Today, may the love of God overwhelm you. May the love of God astound you. May the love of God and his presence bring healing to your soul, wholeness to your life, and above all, strengthen you and empower you in ways that you never thought would happen for you. You receive that? Yes. Pastor Danny, would you come? I want you to lay your hands on your heart right now. And just to open your heart to the precious Holy Spirit. Allow God to flood your soul. So I'm up here to give a transition before we go into the Word of God. So I'm here to give you a prayer of thanksgiving again. But you don't get, don't focus or misunderstand the word again, because it's a choice. We are a praying church, and it's a choice that I want to be here, that we want to be here. So Father God, we give you thanks again, Lord God. Despite whatever chaos is happening in the house or in our block, our neighborhood, despite what chaos is happening in our city, in our state, or in our nation, Father God, you are the same God as yesterday and tomorrow, today and forever, Father God. 
So we give you thanks for your love and your mercy and your grace, Father God. And prepare us now, Lord God. So I speak against all doubt and insecurity. And Father God, I pray that our eyes, ears will be open and our hearts will be softened, Lord God, as we receive the word of God. Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, would you just turn to somebody, introduce yourself, and welcome each other to the house of the Lord on this wonderful Easter morning. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those online, we pray that God's presence would overflow in your apartment, in your condo, in your house, in your car, in your office, maybe at work, wherever. And we just thank God that you're with us today. Praying with us, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to take a look at the cradle, the cross, and the crown. The cradle. Jesus was born to die. See, the cradle represents humanity. The manger was never meant to be a birthing place. The manger was all about feeding the cows, the sheep, the donkeys, the goats, the chickens, all that good stuff. And Luke says, and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I just want to pause. Would you make room today in your inn, in your heart, to encounter a new start? Jesus said it is finished, and God said, now it's a new start for all of us. Amen? Tell your neighbor, you've got a new start. The God of creation chose to emphasize the Lord's birth the most humble birth. And it clarifies Philippians 2.8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus Christ was born in a humble manger to very humble parents. While the birth of this child would normally be a cause of great rejoicing, the joy this birth would bring was short-lived. When a baby is born, everybody gets excited. Everybody wants a picture. But the whole time, there was a shadow over the manger. He was born to die. This child born to die, lying in a manger, was his bed. Just imagine the stable. Imagine the manger. Do you hear him cooing? Do you hear him just talking baby talk? Can you see him just trying to stretch out his arms? His soft baby skin is lying in a manger. Yes, he was the son of man, but he was also still the son of God. He was Emmanuel, representing God is with us. Oh, the great gift to all mankind. Here he lays a baby, knowing he would be a sacrificial lamb. Here he lays the offering of our sin. Here he lays a baby born to die. Why must this baby die? The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, Now I would remind you, brothers of the gospel, that I preach to you which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word, I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as the first importance that I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture. He was buried, 
Then he was raised on the third day according to the Scripture. Why was this baby born to die? Here's the answer. My sin. Our sin. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. See, sin is like a river. It begins like a quiet spring, but it ends up in hurricane winds and stormy waves because sin gives birth to a lifestyle, to addiction, and the end result is for you to die and eternally be separated from God the Father and God the Son. Sin, three letters, but speaks so much. The swallowing clothes were not only birth clothes, but they were also death clothes. So when Jesus was born, his own garments at birth were already predicting his death on the cross. And if we look closely, we can see that cross looming in the shadow. But I want you to focus today that love came down to transform you. Thank you. 
born with the shadow of the cross. The shadow of the cross was upon his heart as he learned to walk, as he learned to talk, as he learned to work in the carpenter shop. The shadow of the cross was upon him in Bethlehem's stable where he was wrapped in those swaddling clothes. The shadow of the cross was upon him in the walls of that carpentry shop. The shadow of the cross was upon him in the garden as he prayed, not my will, but your will be done. The shadow of the cross was upon him when they came with lanterns and torches to arrest the light of the world. The shadow was still there when Judas betrayed him with a kiss. The shadow of the cross was upon him when he was mocked and ridiculed and whipped. The shadow of the cross was upon him when the Roman soldiers crucified him. The cross is the cruelest instrument of death known to man. It shows the depths of man's depravity and humanity to this fellow man, suspended between heaven and earth. The victim of the cross waited helplessly for death to come and take him. There was nobody there to pat him on the head. There was nobody there saying, you're going to make it through. There was nobody there to encourage him. Helplessness. Many a mothers looked on and saw car as their son suffered the humanities of the Roman cross. And as those that were hanging on the cross began to twist in excruciating pain, call out for their mother's touch, for their mother to say something, but to no avail. When the nails were driven in his hands and feet, it was though the icy hands of death had clutched its victim. And now all that was left was pain that was so unbelievable that no one can fathom. Cursed is the man that hangs upon the tree. And the attempt to truly understand the horror of the cross is really futile. Because it's so horrific. The ripping of the skin, the bursting of the arteries, the severing of nerves would bring torment so unfathomable. The cross was hell on earth. One can almost see the demons of hell as they danced around humanity. The very humanity that was created and made in the image of God. Jesus, the Son of God, was born under the shadow of the cross. All the challenges of his life waned in the significance when you compare to the challenge of what the cross brought. He didn't relish the sight of the cross. That's why in the garden, Father, let this cup pass from me. The stress and the anxiety as he prayed in the garden literally began. That stress began to pop the vessels up in his head as blood came down even in the garden because of anxiety, because of the stress, because of the unknown. He resigned himself, not to his will, but his father's will. The word of God tells us that Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame. The cross is a place of suffering. Would you open your Bibles this morning to Isaiah 53? Isaiah 53. We're going to look at verse 2. We will begin there. Isaiah 53, verse 2. For the servant of God grew up before him like a tender plant, like a root out of dry ground. He has no form or royalty or kingly pomp that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. I'm reading it from the Amplified Translation, which means it gives every word possible from the Hebrew or the Greek. He was despised, verse 3, and rejected. 
forsaken by men, a man of sorrows and pain, acquainted with grief and sickness, and like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we did not appreciate his worth or have any esteem for him. Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weakness, our distresses, and he carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken, smitten, afflicted by God as if with leprosy. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement of peace and well-being was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned to everyone to his own way. And the Lord has made a light upon him, the guilt and the iniquity of us all. Jesus took the pain because he loves you. He loves you. Pastor, this is supposed to be a happy sermon. It's Resurrection Sunday. There will be no resurrection without Friday. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection, Philippians 3.10, and the fellowship of his suffering. The cross was a place of sacrifice. Hebrews 9, 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He is no longer hanging on that cross. For that cross is empty and has become a place of our salvation. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. At Calvary, we find the creator being put to death by his own creation. Can I just bring it down to p -dub? For those that are visiting, PW means passed away, and I've had that for 42 years. <laughs> Don't ask any more questions. Here's what it comes down to. The sin of Wayne Lamar Shirk caused Jesus to be crucified. See, it was my sin that caused him to go through such torment. A debt that I could never pay. I, have sh I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on that cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's only begotten son, took my place. As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also died. No matter what text you take, immediately go to the cross. Spurgeon, the great preacher, said this to every young pastor. No matter what the scripture is, bring people to the cross. Because it's at the cross you can lay your burden down. It is at the cross your life is transformed. It is at the cross your despair and depression can be destroyed. And a peace is received that doesn't make sense. It's not a denial. It's the grace and the love of God the Father. The cross is the strength of this man here. Because of the cross, I'm standing here today and not dead. If I didn't have the cross, I would feel like a soldier without a weapon or a laborer without his tools or an artist without a pencil or a pilot without a compass. Oh, so many preach the law and religious customs. Many preach on morality. Others preach on the sacrament and preach about the church. But here at New Hope, we will always preach about the cross. It's at the cross, at the cross, that changed my life. Did it change yours? Oh, thank God for the cross of Calvary upon which our freedom was purchased. This man of sorrows is acquainted with your grief 
is acquainted with your stress, is acquainted with your struggle. For we have a high priest that understands our struggle. You know what I love the most about it? I can't even figure me out most of the time. But he has. And you know what? He's already figured you out. And he has made a way for you to be healed and restored, equipped and empowered to be all that God has called you to be.
thank you that you've risen, you are resurrected. And because of the cross being empty and that empty tomb, you have empowered us to rise out of everything that would come against us. That we can rise above the turmoil, the addiction, the struggles, the traumas of life. Because you live, we also can live. So we say thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give God a praise in this house. Amen. So the cross wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. So make no mistake about it. Jesus Christ reigns. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, our Father. Jesus Christ is our conqueror. He never leads to defeat. He never commands a retreat. From our surrender to Satan, he has conquered everything for us. Somebody better be happy about that. Every knee will bow in heaven. Every knee will bow on earth. And I saw in the night visions, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and there was given him dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Mm. And his kingdom will never be destroyed. Jesus Christ is the conqueror. He took the keys of death from Satan himself. In Revelation 15, verse 3, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth. And Revelation 15 says, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, saying, mighty and marvelous are your works, O Lord, God omnipotent, righteous and trust, true are your ways, O sovereign of the ages, king of the nations. Who shall not reverence and glorify your name, O Lord, giving you honor and praise in worship. Would you stand with me as the worship team leads us in the song, Victor's Crown.
finished. Yes, oh God. You were buried in the ground, but the grave could not contain you, for you were the for Jesus. Don't look at the cross. The cross is empty. If you're seeking the Lord today, don't stoop over to look into the tomb. He's not there. He has risen just as he promised. So if you're searching for Jesus, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. John writes in Revelations 19, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He's no longer a baby in the manger. He is the eternal, everlasting King of kings and Lord of lords. Stephen saw him standing at the right hand of God. Paul heard his voice thunder from heaven. While on Damascus Road, Isaiah saw him sitting on his throne high and lifted up. Daniel saw him as the reigning ancient of days. The psalmist saw him riding on wings of the wind and John the who wrote Revelation, saw him as the lion and the tribe of Judah, to whom all, all power is due unto him. All glory is due unto him. All praise. Today, Emmanuel, that baby, is wearing a crown of a king because he is the king. I ask you this morning, I'm not going to ask you if you know him. I'm going to ask you if you've encountered him and he's transformed your heart. I know a lot of stuff. I know how to turn on the electric. I just flip a switch. But I don't know how to put it together. That's why I have Joshua. I don't know how to take care of my car. I know how to put gas in and that's it. That's why I have Eddie. I have tools. I have every tool that a man can need in my basement. And I can destroy anything. I can rip it up, tear it apart. I can't put squat back together. God forgive you. I don't know what you did, I didn't but say I saw a word. every reflection over there. Didn't say a word. That's why I have George. 
What am I saying? You may say, well, I know God. I know Jesus. Well, you know what? Oh, I believe there's a God. I believe there was a Jesus. That's great, but the demons hell believe that too. Have you encountered him in your heart? Have you encountered him to the place that he is your Lord and your Savior? Have you encountered his great love that is so overwhelming, so unconditional, that even when I screw up, his love does not change for me, and it does not change for you? Understand this. The cross was an object of shame. But now, for us as a church, as Christians, it is literally the symbol of his glory. Would you consider this morning inviting Jesus to come into your heart and life? For those online, do you know him as your Savior and Lord? I didn't say, do you know about him? I'm asking you, are you part of the family of God? His word is life transforming. His word is life giving. We believe here at this church, God wants you healed and restored. He wants you to be equipped and empowered to go out and make a divine difference in this marketplace in which we live. But that cannot happen until I invite Jesus into my heart and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Now, for Wayne Lamar here, Jesus, forgive me of my stubbornness. I know you're not rebellion, but Lord, forgive me of my rebelliousness. You all with me? If you've never invited Jesus into your heart, today is your day. That's why we celebrate Easter. That's why we reflect on the cross. That's why we go to the promises of God. He is coming back. But if you never ask the Lord, those that are watching and those that are here, we're just going to bow our heads and we're going to pray this prayer. It's simple, but it's life transforming. And we invite you to pray this with your heart. Well, Pastor, I prayed that when I was a kid. How's it going? <laughs> Do you encounter his love every day? When you love somebody, you usually talk to them every day as much as you can. Do you talk to them every day? Jesus is not a one-night stand, nor is he a weekend visit. He wants to move in. And he wants to help you through life. He wants to help you through every struggle, every care. He wants to be there in the highs and be there in the lows. I don't know about you, but I need Jesus and the power of the cross to transform my life. Let's pray this together. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me that you died on the cross for me. And on this Easter Sunday, I ask you, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. And I thank you now. I'm part of your family. And you are my king of kings. You are my Lord of lords. And I say thank you for believing in me when I did not believe in myself. And for giving me a new life. A new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I close with Revelations chapter 4. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, Lord. Worthy are you, Lord God, to receive glory and honor, power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and created. Today at New Hope Assembly here in Saugus, 
we bow down and we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus, where his mercy and his love will transform my life and know it will transform you. May we cry out, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Let's stand together. together. 
Thank you for giving us victory through your son, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the resurrection. Father, we love you. Yes. We praise you. Yes. We give you all the glory and all the praise. But there's no one worthy. There's no one like you. There's no one like you, Jesus. Dios mío, so en este día te doy gracias. Por todo tu amor, por toda tu misericordia. Por tu gracia, Señor. Porque nos has salvado, Padre. Gracias. Lord. Father Jesus, as we finished service today God we, I ask you Father to just bless your people today and continue to guide them all Father Lord for them not to forget what you did in the cross what you did for every single one of us Father for we are more than victorious more than conquerors in you Lord and this we, we ask you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. As we close out our service this morning, we want to bring to the Lord his tithes and our offerings. I'm going to ask for the ushers to come down. As the pastor of this house, the senior lead pastor, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for Believing in our Easter project, buying chickens for families in Cuba, that they can be making some money for themselves. And we want to say thank you. That $10, that makes a difference. $10 buys the chicken with the feed and the medicine. And to buy a dozen eggs over there is one week's salary. And we heard about the need in the five churches and the southern part of Cuba. And my heart just really was, was broken. And the Lord said, instead of buying candy for the kids in the church and the church family, they don't need more candy, but these families need protein. And so I want to say thank you. Today's our last day that you can put that offering in because we want to send that out down to Cuba literally on Wednesday. So I want to say thank you so much. And thank you for believing in the vision here of this house, in the mission of this house. We believe that everybody should encounter out of this house that you're loved, you're valued, you're treasured, and you're wanted. That you can be healed and restore, restored from anything and everything. And that you would be empowered to make a difference and to help somebody else out along the way. Amen? Lynn, would you please come and would you just give thanks for this offering? Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for this opportunity that we would give back just 10%, Lord mm. God, such a small amount for everything that you gave. Your son, Lord God, thank you, Jesus, that you paid such a hefty price. Father God, we just glorify you and we thank you that as we give today, that we are being blessed, Lord God, and that we can bless others. Help us to take what we have heard today and walk with it, Lord God, and let it be part of our tithe and our time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you as you give today. I just have a couple of announcements before Pastor Eddie comes to give us our benediction. Tomorrow the church office is closed in honor of Easter Monday. Tuesday night we have 6 o'clock prayer. All right, family prayer at 6 o'clock Tuesday night here at this altar. Wednesday night. James chapter 2, we made it through 1. So James chapter 2, if you can't come to the house for the study, you can join us online. It is on Facebook, so you can just look up New Hope Saugus, and it will be there. 
Don't forget, next Sunday we're receiving new members. And then the Sunday after that, we have our annual business meeting. And so, members, we need to know who is coming because there will be a luncheon for you. So, Pastor Eddie, would you come, please, and just speak a blessing over this congregation? Amen. Why don't you stand with me? And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father, in this we do pray and we receive this blessing as we go and spend time with our fam family celebrating that which you did for us that we might come to you. In your name we pray, amen and amen. May the peace of God go with you.